years old? Okay. There's a lot of 56 year olds. What about the Bible? What you want to know about? I would love to know what you know about it. I'm not a speaker. Okay. Well, we're going to. Come correct. That's why I go along with you. If you're not correct, I won't read it. All right. Well, what we gonna we're gonna cover today? All right. We're gonna see. Um, so first off, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to our heavenly Father. We say Call Halal Abanawi Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And what are we out here for? We're out here to raise the dead bones, the dry bones of Israel. Contrary to popular belief. The Lord don't love everybody. He don't love everybody. He has a, 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 a special people unto himself. Let's get that in uh, Deuteronomy 7 and 6. You got it? Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. For thou art an holy people. Now holy, that word holy means, is kodash in the Hebrew. That means separate, set apart. Keep going. For the Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people, below, above all people, equal to, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. That are upon the face of the earth. So what that what that mean to you, brother? It's like, it's like you said. I mean, it's like uh, we have a something we like. Mm -hmm. uh, like every individual. Like, would you think that you're equal to this guy right here? You're not equal to him. You're better than him. That's God that said that you're better than that guy right there. Let's say it one more time. For thou, thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that upon the face of the earth. That are upon the face of the earth. But there's a problem going on, right? Our people are at the bottom. That's not, that's right, right? Like when you go to every project, when you go to the slums, when you go to the ghettos, who are you gonna see? Our people there, right? Everybody on this sign right here, so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, right? Now, what happened when Columbus came to America? what did he do? Was he, did he discover America? Hell no. Nah. He didn't discover America. Hell no. You related to Columbus. <laughs> oh, that's what you think. So, you know, again, contrary to popular belief, Columbus didn't discover a damn thing, right? There was already people here. And what happened to those people? They trusted in people like that. And they were killed. They were destroyed. Um, so the thing about it is that, you know, we come out here to wake up our people because you're not going to hear this in the church, right? All of our people say they've read the Bible forever, right? They've read their Bible, they read their Bible all their lives, but yet they don't have the true understanding of it. And why? Because God has uh, shadowed that or or put a veil over the eyes of people that aren't willing to follow His commandments, right? So um, actually, let me get. Um, let me get 2 Kings uh, 17 and 27, I believe, where it talks about uh, 17, and we'll go to verse 27. Cap on the seat! Salawam! 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 17, So, you know, these people are walking on stolen land. Right, and they think that there's no recompense that's going to come to them, but there is a recompense that's coming to them, right? Damn, my bad, that's not even it. Pause. That's not it. Let me look. Let me let me uh let me look for it, and I'll, I'll let you know. Actually, if you want, get me uh Matthew 10, and we'll do 24, right? 
and you get me Matthew 7, 21. We'll start there. All right, so one of the things that has happened to our people, oh, awesome, uh, Deuteronomy 28, 15. Put a, you know, put a finger in that. So what has happened is that our people, right, though they claim they love God, how do you show that you love God? Right, is love just talking about it, saying, God, I love you, right? No, God requires action, right? Um, yeah, say it again. Right, right, faith without, hey, and that's, that's mighty right there, because that's a true statement, right? Because you can have faith all day long, but unless you're putting the works behind it, then it means nothing, right? And he's an action God. Right, let's uh, bring this Deuteronomy out, actually. It's locked, my bad. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. It says, but it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now, this was the Lord speaking to Moses, right? He said to the children of Israel, he said, actually, uh, grab 29 and 1 real quick, just to, for context purposes. This is Deuteronomy, chapter 29, verse 1. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel. With the children of Israel. See, so he wasn't talking to everybody else, right? So let's go back to that 15 and let's find out. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And wouldn't you say, wouldn't you say that our people are in a cursed state, right? Our people at the bottom, right? Our people are, you know, our people are, like I said, in the projects and the slums and the ghettos, right? Our people are homeless, our people are destitute. Our people are the ones that need saving, right? Would you consider these people to need saving? Hell nah, because they run everything. <laughs> Right, I guarantee you these three stores right here are owned by one of them, right? And they would be from the nation of Edom, which would be the so-called white man, right? So the Lord said that if we don't follow his commandments, that we're gonna be a cursed people. And that's exactly what we are. Let's read the first curse and let's see what he says. Verse 16, cursed shalt thou be in the city. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, right? So. You know, again, back to the projects, the slums, the cities, you're always going to find the same people, so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, right? Truth be told, you're not a black man, right? His, his pants are black, right? Black is a color in a crayon box. What you are is a melanated man, right? Um, so let, let's read this one, actually. Uh, give me that, Matthew. Yeah, 24. Matthews chapter 10, verse 24. The disciples is not above his master. The disciple isn't above his master, right? We have a lot of people that think that they are above God, right? Esau, the Edomites think that they are above God, but they're not, keep going. Nor the servant above his Lord. Nor the servant above his Lord, right? So if the Lord put out a set of commandments for his children to follow, and they don't obey them, what do you think is gonna happen to them? They are gonna get a whooping, right? And we've been going through thousands of years of whooping, right? It's about time that we all wake up from the dust and stop taking these ass whoopings, right? Um, give me that, Matthew 7, 21. It's the book of Matthew, chapter seven, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord. And we have a lot of people, you know, we have a lot of Christians, right? People that sit in these air conditioned rooms um, who think that the Lord is gonna deal with them. You know, they think that they're already saved, right? But you're not saved. The Lord said that he who endures until the end, the same shall be saved. So if you haven't noticed in the world, the world is going straight to hell. It's going straight down, right? Like this economy is tanking faster than, yeah, you gotta watch, right? And it's good to be a watcher, right? You gotta watch what's going on. Um, 
you know, the Lord sends out watchmen before any disaster, right? Look what happened with Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Who did he, he send out? He sent Abraham to find if there was any righteous people. It didn't happen. Look at Jonah, right? Jonah went to Nineveh, and he didn't want to go at first, you know, but the Lord was like, oh, really? You're going to do what I'm going to say anyway, and then it's going to happen. So he went to Nineveh and prophesied against Nineveh, and what happened? Whoever hearkened, hearkened, but the rest of it got destroyed, right? And the same thing, and this is what our job is. Our job is to be the prophets of the Lord and to prophesy the downfall of this entire nation, right? And it's coming. It's coming. You see it, right? Banks are shutting down. Uh, yeah, no, go ahead. I've always heard about Beastie Alley. Mm -hmm. I read across the platform. I can believe that I see no woman sitting there talking to someone else. Mm -hmm. What in the hell did mm -hmm. they call? Satan and Lucifer himself. Hey, but look. It's turning and, and, in the world today. And, right now. And who are the people that push this stuff? The people that run this world. Yes, sir. Right? Because the world was given into the hands of the wicked. Yes, sir. Right? That's Job uh, 9. Bring that out. You know, this world is run by a set of people. And you know this. You know, they make laws against us, right? They they, they, they send their goons, the, the, the ones in the blue vehicles against us, right? Bring this up. They're not gonna win. They think they're gonna win. And that goes back to that, the servant is not more than his master, right? This is the book of Job, chapter nine, verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The earth is given, right? The Lord gave them the earth, right? Why? Because of our disobedience, right? Keep going. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Who gave us this white messiah right here? Uh, I don't know where it goes. Yeah, you, that, yeah, right. But it's it's definitely a fabricated image. Yeah. That guy right there is Caesar Borgias. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He got some. He has. Hey, if there's a book, right? Absolutely. There's a book, and you you talking about artifacts, right? Yeah, the artifacts. There's a book called the Russian Icons. Yeah, hell yeah, bring it out. There's a book called the Russian Icons, and in this book it shows all of the depicted images of Christ, of his mother, and they're all melanated people, right? Uh, it's, it's in the scriptures. Let, let's bring that out real quick. Let's bring out um, Revelation one. Right, because um, you know the root word of revelation is to what? Is to reveal, right? So we're gonna show you real quick. Just look at it. Just yeah, take a picture. Take a picture at it. Take a picture or something. I want it. I don't know if you can have it. You know, I don't know. We we might be able to buy one for you. You know. And you keep coming back out here. Yeah, you keep coming back out. We'll, we'll make sure you have one. All right. Hey, we'll make a deal with you personally. Yeah. How about this? We'll make a deal with you, right? You keep coming out here, you keep showing the Lord that you love him, right? We're going to set you up with some commandments, stuff that you should be doing that this church isn't going to teach you, and we'll make sure you have one of those books. That's 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 guaranteed by me. Right? No. My brother, my sister, my sister. Mhm. Mhm. Uh, they, uh, they all change their names, and uh, so I'm affiliated mm -hmm. directly. Okay. Because uh, I don't understand exactly what y'all talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, what's what's holding you back? What's holding me back? Uh, spiritual sightings, big uh, revelations, right. stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, it, uh, I always make times. Yeah, you got to make time for the Lord. You definitely got to make time. Uh, let me show you this real quick. Let me show you this. Re Revelation chapter 1 from the top. The re revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his service things which must surely come to pass. Which must shortly come to pass. And, you know, one of the things that Christ said was that in the end times, it's going to be what? Wars, rumors of wars, right? 
famines, pestilences, right? We're getting ready to shut down again because of some BS pestilence that, you know, that our oppressor made, but he did it at the direction of the Most High God, right? Because the Most High uses them as servants, right? He called, uh, Salaki, he called Nebuchadnezzar his servant, right? He called Herod his servant. Um, bring this out. He sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Verse 2. Who built. Verse 3. Verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is he that readeth. And that's the problem with our people. Our people don't like picking up that book. Right? But if you pick up that book, best and believe that you will be blessed. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Keep going. Blessed is, blessed is he, he that readeth. And they that hear the words of his prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. Now, what are those things that he just mentioned? He said, and keep those things that are written therein. Right? Let's go back to that Deuteronomy 28 and we'll go to verse 1 and we'll see what those things are. You know, he said, blessed is he who readeth and blessed are they that keep the things written in the book. Which book? Bring it out. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verse 1, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Above all nations, right? So he gave us commandments. This is what we should be following. Uh, let's... let's Go to that reveal. Yeah, yeah. The time was that hand. Uh, Revelation chapter one verse three. Blessed is, bless is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. The time is at hand, and you see the world is waxing worse and worse. Let's go to that reveal just to get them confirmation. Fourteen. Uh, Thirteen. We're gonna see if this description matches that devil right there. Revelation chapter one, verse four, 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, went alike unto the sun, a man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about his patch, the patch, with a golden girdle. So he had a garment that went from top to bottom, right? And then he had a gold belt, a big giant gold belt on his Verse 14, his head and his hairs were white like wool. White like wool. Who has woolly hair in this earth? Just predatory. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Okay. As white as snow, and his eyes was flame and fire. Verse 15, and his feet until like fine does. As if they burned in a furnace. As if they burned in a furnace. So when you burn anything in a furnace, what color does it turn? Real, real dark, right? So this was a, a highly melanated man, right? Um, let's go back to that uh, Matthew seven twenty one. We're gonna keep going on with that. The book of Matthew chapter seven verse twenty one. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Right, but again, goes back to the same thing. Doing something, we have to do something. We have to do the will of the Father. Um, grab me that in uh, Ecclesiastes 12, 13 real quick. And we're gonna find out what the will of the Father is, right? Keep going. Verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And that's the TD snakes, right? That's the Creflo, pass me your dollar, right? That's the, uh, and, and look what's happening. TD snakes is getting, he, he, he's getting revealed, right? His truth is getting revealed. All that stuff he was doing in the dark is coming to pass, right? Keep going. Yeah, P. Shitty, I mean P. Diddy. <laughs> have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils now look they prophesy nothing 
they don't prophesy a damn thing, Amen. right? Um, the Lord said to go out to the highways and hedges and compel my people. Amen. They don't stay. They don't do that. They stay in the air conditioned building and chill, right? They give out this false gospel. They they lead everybody astray. There's another uh, precept that says, "Woe unto the pastors that scatter my sheep." They're heathens, exactly. They're acting like heathens, right? They may even be Israelites themselves, but because they have sold their soul, essentially, right, for that fame, for that for that glory, hey, that filthy lucre, that's what they sold it for. Keep going. And in thy name done many wonderful works, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Ye that work iniquity. There's that word again, iniquity. Now, in case you didn't know, iniquity is sin, but we're going to get that. Uh, hey, bro. I'll be back. I'll be back. You'll be back? Let, let me give you two more presets then. All right. Uh, 12 and 13. Yeah, Ecclesiastes uh, 12. The highways and hedges, the highways and byways, right? This is how you're supposed to, like, what did Christ do? Christ did, he, he did the same thing. He, him and his 12 apostles, right? And, and, and just by his word, yourself, mm -hmm. you know, the power of his word, and the truth of it. Mm -hmm. Disrupts. That's what it does. It disrupts. It disrupts this world, right? Because this world goes opposite of the Most High God, right? Like today is a Sabbath day, right? What you should. What do you know that today is a Sabbath day? It's supposed to be a Saturday, right? So what you're supposed to do on the Sabbath day, they're not doing, right? They're doing the exact opposite. You're not supposed to buy, sell, right? But yet they're buying and selling. We have people walking up and down the street buying and selling, right? And this is something. Just keeping the Sabbath alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he flipped tables. He he made whips yeah, to scourge them, right? But this is the thing that this world promotes, right? This world promotes disobedience to the Most High God. That's right. And because of that, we suffer because he's not making anybody else suffer. You don't see them suffering. Hell no. Nah. They they prosper because we're at the bottom. Right, we're more response. He expects more of us, right? Absolutely. I'm gonna give you this other. Which one I got? You? Nothing. Give me Psalms 147, verse 19. Bring this out. Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. The conclusion of everything. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. The whole duty of man is just to fear God and keep his commandments, right? Bring this out. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. He hasn't dealt with any other nation, only the nation of Israel. The, the people right here on this sign, right? I know we got another bigger sign than that, but that's not, hey, no, don't worry about it. But look, where do you see yourself on this sign? All right, would you consider yourself a so-called African-American? Would you be from the Caribbean islands? Where does your father come from? Across the water? As far as you know, so we're going to, uh, assume or, or take a pretty good guess that you would probably be from the tribe of Judah. Right? That's that's a powerful tribe, right? Christ came from Judah. Um, bring this up. He hath not dealt so with any nation, and for his judgments they have not known them. Praise ye Yahweh. Praise ye Yahweh. All praises, right? So they don't know what it's like to be sold on slave ships. They don't, but that's a prophecy in the Bible, right? Hebrews chapter seven, verse 14. For it is evident that the Lord sprang out of Judah 
a rich child may speak nothing concerning priesthood. See? Hey, the Lord came out of Judah. The so-called African-American, so-called black. I mean, how can you be an African-American? That's two continents. Really? What, what, what country in Africa? Right? We don't know, right? But all that confirms is the fact because our heritage was snatched away from us. Why? Because of our disobedience. Yeah. I've seen that um, most people in America, they think Africa is so far away. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen another platform on uh, the video. Mm -hmm. Spain. Africa is right, right down the, the water right there. Mm -hmm. It's not that far away. I mean, it's it got a little distance to it. That's not too far. That's not too far. It's more like me to California. Hey, yeah, two thousand. Yeah, that's about. Yeah. It's not that far away for any. Hey, I, I drove. I drove damn near two thousand miles from Colorado to to New York. <laughs> that, it took me it took me about three days. Mm -mm. All right, bring this up. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter seventeen, verse four. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. The Lord gave us a heritage. The Lord gave us a law for a heritage, right? He said, and you heard in Deuteronomy, he said, follow my law, statutes, and commandments, and I'll put you above everybody else. Let's give you one, two commandments, and then we'll send you on your way. Okay, let's get, um, let's get Leviticus 11 and seven. What is your, yeah, give me numbers. Um, second so you know again following his commandments is paramount to our survival right you know we follow it he sets us on high we don't follow it he brings us down low right bring this out what's your diet look like yeah you eat pork not really sometimes occasionally occasionally a ham sandwich ham and cheese on a croissant a little bit of mayo. <laughs> I, I used to eat those. Hey, I used to go like you know after a, a night of of a uh, a night of clubbing. You know, you, you get the, uh, the the ham and cheese sandwich on a croissant. I'm working the country, and so uh, I, I came up eating all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Coon turtle, all kinds. Right. Of stuff, right? Um, and that's all the stuff that you shouldn't be eating. Yes, I agree with you. Like I'm saying, my brother and. Um, Sister, they have it, they do exactly what y'all do. Mm -hmm. They talk about the pork, the foot, the clover. Mm-hmm, clover foot, right. Right, but they choose not to cut. The cut let's, let's give you a refresher, straight from the scripture. Uh, what's he call it? Uh, the shrimp and roaches. Mm-hmm, roaches of the sea, con. That's right, hey, that's the spirit right there. Hey, you know something's missing. Something ain't making sense. It's making sense now, though, I bet. Hey, check this out. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 7. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. They are unclean, right? I see you with your hogs on the country. Mm-hmm. They are maggots in the skin already. Yeah, maggots already. Have you seen Have you seen that video about the Coca Cola pouring in Coca Cola on it? Well, supposedly you pour Coca Cola on some pork, you're gonna see the worms come up because they don't like the acid from the from the Coca Cola. So, you know, pork chop sandwiches, right? Your a pastor in a church will be quick to have a pork chop sandwich given to his congregation, right? A, a smoked ham, uh, you know. Bacon. bacon egg and cheeses right like all these things pepperoni pizza these are all abominations and the lord doesn't like them but our people continue to do it right and then they think something as simple as uh oh i don't think the lord and, and i've heard i've heard this many times right they say oh i don't think the lord is going to hate me because you know i'm eating a piece of bacon it's the exact opposite exactly your body is your temple and right your body is your temple and you want to keep it pure and putting pork in your temple isn't good right it's an abomination and the lord hates all abominations that's not me that's what the scriptures say right um let's go with numbers real quick huh 
Okay. All right, last one, last one, last one. This is it. Numbers chapter 15, verse 30, 37. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the border of their garments. Fringes in the borders of the garments. So you see all these brothers here? All right, we all got fringes on. This is another commandment that the Lord expects us to keep. Let's see how long, because some say, eh, Christ did away with this, Christ didn't do away with it, right? Let's keep going. Throughout their generation. That means forever. Our people are still generating, so therefore it still stays. And that they put upon the fringe of the bulls a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. And do them. Like you, only some of them. All the commandments of the Lord. And do them. And do them. See? So these right here are to remind us to stay away from that pork chop sandwich, right? To stay away from that shrimp scampi, right? To stay away from stuff like that. So you got our card, right? Lord will you come back and, and check us out? Hey, we, 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 we try, right? We just doing what the Lord told us to do. He told us to come out and compel our people, right? Hey, all praises, hey, but that's the spirit right there that's making you tear up, right? Hey, all praises, I, I, I pray that you come back and you know you hear some more of this word. All praise. Right? I've been out of town all this week. Okay. Hey, the Lord, the Lord, man's going, so I'm the Lord. Right? All right. Take it easy. Have a blessed day. Hey, all praises. Whew. Tears. Dang. Our people are in pain. You know, our people are in pain. Right? Our people are the ones that need salvation. Not these hicks that drive Ram 1500s. They don't need salvation. Right? It's the brokenhearted, it's the meek, it's the destitute, it's the ones that are on the bottom of society that need salvation. It's this brother right here who needs salvation. Not her. She don't need it. Oh man, let's keep going with the lesson. Um, let me get that Job uh, 10, 14. And we were talking about iniquity, right? What is iniquity? Bring this out. Job chapter 10, verse 14. If I sin, then thou mockest me. And that if thou sin, right? The Lord is gonna mark you. And this is Job. Job was marked pretty bad, right? Because Job had his faith tested. Job had his integrity tested. Right? He was at a high estate, and the Lord decided to let Satan bring him down to test him. Right? Our people get tested day in and day out. And 90% of them fail their tests. Why? Because they think sin is better than following the Lord. Right? They're in ignorance. But it's our job to pull these people out of their sin, out of their iniquity, and out of their ignorance. From the top, Job chapter 10, verse 14. If I sin, then thou mockest me, and thou wilt not acquit me from my iniquity. From mine iniquity. Uh, give me Hosea 4 and 6. Right? Why do we do iniquity? Right? What is iniquity? Let's find out. It's the book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the transgression of the law. So eating a pork chop sandwich is against the law, right? Eating a nice lobster, a nice 10 pound lobster on your plate is abomination and against the law. And it's disgusting too. Bring this out. Hosea chapter four, verse six, excuse me. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed, right? The children of Israel are destroyed. Right? They allow their oppressor, who walks on stolen land, with coffee cups, to guide them in the way that they should go. How do you have the oppressor teaching you your Bible? 
Would you think that your oppressor or your enemy would teach you the Bible correctly? La -a. La -a. He has his own self-interest in mind. The Lord has your self-interest in mind. He made these laws for a reason. Keep going. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. And the Lord is rejecting a lot of our people. I don't know if anybody's paying attention to the news, but every day there's damn near five to ten people getting put to flight. There's a lot of people, a lot of people getting put to flight on a daily basis, right? Over Christmas, right? I heard that some lady, the lady's uh, little brother, shot her because he didn't like his Christmas gift. Who does that? And then the other brother shot him. So that's two Israelites dead. Be three. Uh, well, he's gonna, he's gonna be in prison for a long time, so he, he might as well, you know, might as well count it as a as a loss because he's in the st a state of deadness, a state of death. But that's three Israelites that are lost because they wanted to follow America. They wanted to follow the ways of this country, and the ways of this country are death to our people. Keep going. Thou shalt, thou shalt, thou shalt be no priest to, to thee. Uh, Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I also will reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. And that's what happened. Because they forgot the law of the Lord, the Lord forgot them. The Lord ain't dealing with them. The Lord isn't dealing with sinners, right? The church will have you believe that it's okay to sin. Well, we're here to tell you that it is not okay to sin, and the Lord hates sinners, period. The Lord doesn't hate the sin, as the Christian church will have you believe. The Lord hates sinners. Right. Bring this out. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 13, verse 22. Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. And that's what the Christian church promises every day to our people. They promise life. They promise everlasting life with a bunch of lies. You pay, this, you pay these tithes, you pay this seed, this $45 seed, no, $50, no, $55 seed, then you will be blessed. No, you're not going to be blessed, right? Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is he that keepeth the things that are written in this book. If you ain't keeping the commandments, you're in sin. Therefore, eventually, your sin is going to lead to your death. Hopefully, our people can wake up and turn from their sin and come back to the Lord because that's what he wants the most. <clears throat> Let me get... Uh... Damn, it's cold as hell out here. It's like getting colder. Hey, take your time, please. I was trying to turn him yesterday. I was like, yeah, 3 and 18. Gun. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 4, verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I... So Israel is the Lord's firstborn. So of course, it's like any situation. If your kids get out of line then your kids need discipline. If you tell them not to play video games at one in the morning, and they're playing video games at one in the morning, that's grounds for an ass whooping. That's right. The same thing with the Lord. The Lord said, if you don't follow my commandments, then you will be cursed. I have no clue. 
I can't tell if that's Northern Kingdom or an Edomite. Either way, our people need to separate from their enemy. Bring this out. First John chapter three, verse 18. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and truth. In deed and in truth. The Lord is a God of action, right? And again, back to the same point. It's, it's pretty simple. It's like, it's, the Lord is like two plus two equals four, right? But this world will have you believe that two plus two equals 13. Make that make sense, right? So because Israel is the firstborn and the Lord loves Israel so much, he wants us to keep his commandments, right? He's not dealing with everybody in this world. Definitely not Moab. <laughs> um, so he said, he said, love not in word, but in truth and in deed, right? What is the truth? We heard in Ecclesiastes 12 and 13 that fearing the Lord and keeping his commandments is the whole duty of man. So now let's hear this John 8 and 32 to find out what the truth is. It's the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall make you free. The truth goes back to Ecclesiastes 12, 13. What you got? Come on, bring that up. It's the book of Psalm, chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. There it is. Thy law is the truth. Going back to everything that we've been covering since we started. The law keeps you from death. Our people love death because apparently they continue in sin as, as much as possible all right we just went through christmas 99 uh, percent of them don't even know why they celebrate christmas it isn't when christ was born christ wasn't born in the winter time right but the feast of dedication is in the winter time right how many people have celebrated the feast of dedication i don't think a lot of people on the street i think everybody's worried about christmas and then this Sunday, there's going to be a lot of drunkards out here celebrating New Year. Like the brother Yashua was bringing out yesterday, when does a new year start in the dead of winter? Make that make sense. Everything is dead. There's nothing new around. Right? What you're, what you're celebrating, you're celebrating the winter solstice. You're celebrating deities I'm not even gonna call them gods because they don't even deserve that same recognition. You're recognizing deities that your oppressor has spewed upon you. <laughs> Crazies. <laughs> that is nuts. Um, next precept. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so, as the brother just brought out, right, the the truth is the law, right? Dog walking dog. Yeah, bring that from the top. The book of Psalm, chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and the law is the truth. The law is the truth. Right, so we're going to sort of get back on topic. We were talking about Christ and the whole purpose of Christ, right? And the Christian church will have you believe that Christ did away with the law. But did Christ really do away with the law? Or did he... Or did he enforce the law? Or should I say fulfill the law? He was a living example for us to take note of. He kept the law. He was perfect. Got it. Bring it out. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine. Let your light shine. 
right? The light, if in case you didn't know, is also the law, right? And our people have a job to do. Our people are content with doing the same garbage day in and day out. Waking up, going to work for your oppressor, working 40, 50, 60 hour days, hard labor, right? Going back home, going to sleep, doing it all over the next day. You get no fulfillment out of that. All you're doing is modern day slavery. That's all you're doing. As what's being illustrated right in front of us. This looks like slavery to me. And then our people don't even make the money, right? Doing all this moving, doing all this. Oh man, damn. I pissed somebody off, I think, right? You know, our, our people are content with just going to a job that pays them the bare minimum. You know, the Lord said you shouldn't set your treasures up on earth, but set your treasures in heaven, right? And our people don't understand that. Keep going. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So, how do we glorify our Father? By showing forth our light, keeping the commandments and glorifying our Heavenly Father, right? By doing what He said to do, right? What's wrong with keeping a beard on your face? What's wrong with putting some fringes on your, on the skirt of your, your uh, shirt? What's wrong with not eating shrimp, crab, pork, lobster, and all the other abominations? We all used to do it, but we found that the Lord was more important than the stuff that we wanted, the stuff that we desired, right? Sleeping around with multiple women. That ain't conducive to anybody. Right? Treating your sisters like whores. Right? Not loving your brother, sleeping with their wives. Doing them dirty. This is all stuff that the Lord doesn't like. And if you continue, the Lord is going to destroy you. Did we finish that? Keep going. Verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now that word fulfill in the Hebrew, when you look it up, it just means similar to an example, right? He came to fulfill or to fill the law of the Lord to show the Israelites how it should be done. He didn't say that the law was done away with. He didn't say that I took the law on the cross, that it was nailed to the cross, like a lot of Christians like to say. It wasn't nailed to the cross. You know what was nailed to the cross? sacrifice getting judged because before before Christ when a person when an Israelite used to sin he used to get put to death immediately right there was no forgiveness but Christ introduced that forgiveness right we're all in a grace period and what do you do on a grace period it's like with a phone bill they give you a grace period. They give you what? Five, ten days? Probably less. I don't know. I prepaid my shit. Yeah, it's usually like ten days, something like that. But they give you a grace period to what? To pay your bill. Right? And that's what the children of Israel should be doing right now is trying to pay that bill. But at the end of that grace period, what happens? Now here comes the death and destruction. Right? If the Lord sees that you're not trying to hearken to his commandments, he's going to destroy you. And if nobody's been seeing the news, there's a lot of destruction getting ready to come. Keep going. Verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled 
not one jot or one tittle shall pass from the law. So therefore, out of the words of Christ, the law is still in effect. So therefore, you should still be keeping the law. Bring it up. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Most High. Every word. And where do you find those words? You find those in the first five books. You find those in the prophet. These are all the words of the Lord. Right? What was Christ teaching when he was here? He wasn't teaching the book of Matthew, the book of Luke. No. Those were accounts of Christ. That's what those were. Those were different accounts of Christ. What Christ was teaching was the Old Testament. He was teaching the law or the will of his father. It seems pretty cut and dry to me. How about you brothers? Feel cut and dry? Yeah. The Lord said to keep his commandments. Christ said keep the Lord's commandments. What's so hard about it? Again, two plus two equals four. Uh, So we're going to keep rolling on with this. It's cold as hell out here. You know, we all, I'm sure, would rather be home in our comfy beds or comfy couches with the heat on. But instead, what are we doing? We out here trying to edify the sheep. We prophesying to the wind. Right? Uh... Damn, he sound like his car is about to explode. Yikes, he definitely got a backfire. That thing is going to explode tonight. Bring that out. Daniel chapter 12 from the top. Now this, what this is, is this is a future prophecy. This is talking about the time of trouble that's to come. Right, and it's rapidly approaching, just like we were covering in the in the movie "Leave the World Behind." Right, when that little Edomite girl saw that ship, what was the ship doing? The ship was coming to shore indefinitely. Right, and it kept creeping up, little by little by little by little, until it finally hit the shore. And that's what the Lord is doing right now. He's slowly creeping up. He's slowly allowing you to continue in your ways to see if you're going to repent and follow his commandments. But he's slowly creeping up on you. And eventually, he's going to get to the shore. And if you ain't right with the Lord, your ass is grass and he is the lawnmower. Bring this out. Daniel chapter 12 from the top. And at the time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never once seen there was a nation. Even to that same time, at the time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. Everyone that's found written in the book, right? There's gonna be a time of trouble, people, a uh, time of trouble coming. Hey man, you might have to edit that part out. Oh, I wasn't talking to you. Would you like to talk though? Are you a follower of Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Bible? You think so? You think so? Uh, how can we be sure of it? Our Lord and Savior. In the Hebrew, his name is Yahweh Shai. In the Hebrew, his name is Yahweh Shai. Who's this guy? Is that is that is that Christ? 
Oh, okay. Oh, well, it, it's okay. You can keep going. Keep enjoying your day. Don't worry about it. I don't know about brother, but, you know, <laughs> you can enjoy your day. <laughs> hey, I know. That's why you can't say it. <laughs> um, Salakia, so where was I at? Um, so the names that are written in the book, right? Those names are going to be the people that the Lord has ordained from the beginning, right? The ones that are anointed, the ones that keep his commandments, the ones that keep his commandments are going to live. The ones that don't keep commandments, guess what's going to happen to them? Let's keep going. Chapter, verse 2. And many of them shall, and many of them by sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Now what this is talking about, this is talking about that in, in, a, in a time span, right, many of the children of Israel are going to awake. What does it mean to awake? Right, what does it mean? Let's, let's find out what it means to awake. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 3. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? Can these bones live? Can the children of Israel live? Right? If, if sin brings on death, then following the commandments and not being in sin brings on life. Let's keep going. And I answered, O Lord Yahweh, thou knowest. Verse 4. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones. And that's what we try to do. Week in, week out, right? Daily if possible. We try to prophesy to these bones. You so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American man, woman, and child. Right? We try to prophesy to you so that you can come to life. So that you can be awakened. Right? But our people are, are hard-headed, stiff-necked people. And they don't want to follow the will of the Lord. Keep going. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of Yahweh. Isn't that what I just said? Hear the word of the Lord. Hear it. Right? Don't just ignore it. Don't just pass over it. You got to hear the word of the Lord. Keep going. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And ye shall live. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. The water for that. Hey, is, is that a lion? Or on the, are there two lions on the side? Hey. Hey, all praises. Look at that. We get a gift. Hey, you got to give that up to the Lord right there. All right? We didn't ask him to do that. He did that on his own free will. Right? Bring the, <laughs> Keep going on that. Some to everlasting life. Some to everlasting life. We hope and we pray that we get to enjoy that everlasting life that the Lord has promised. Right? I'm sure everybody wants to enjoy that everlasting life, but everybody's not going to be able to enjoy it. Keep going. And some to shame. An everlasting contempt. An everlasting contempt and shame. Right? You know who those people are? Those people are the ones that ignore us on the streets. Right? Those are the people that want to laugh at the servants of the Lord. Those are the ones that think that they know better than God. How do you know better than your creator? Make that make sense. Right? The Lord said, do my commandments and ye shall live. Right? But our people do not want to hearken. Our people want to do what they want to do and have a good time. Keep going. Verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And the ones that are shining bright right now are the ones that keep the commandments of the Lord. Right? One of the previous verses we just went into was, let your light shine. And the light is the law. And that's what we try to do. We try to make our light shine. We try to be that example that Christ provided for the Jews at the time. Right? Keep going. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. 
forever and ever. So Lord willing, we get to see that everlasting life. We get to see that righteousness that the Lord has promised us. Right? And the Lord isn't a man that he should lie. But man is a man that he should lie. Esau is a man that he should lie. And that's all they do is they lie from, from birth. What is it? What is it, Yashawan? They're born speaking lies. That's Esau for you. 